YouTubers, welcome to my shop here in Asheville, North Carolina. It's a wonderful evening tonight. I don't have to work tomorrow, and I'm drinking a cup of coffee at 8 o'clock at night because I'm going to stay up and play in my shop. And I thought I'd make a video because it takes so much time for the idiot, the idiot, to save itself and to upload to YouTube and so I'm gonna be up all night doing that and I'd like to put this video together in not too much time I don't spend a lot of time making videos I'll point out that I am NOT a machinist I don't claim to be a machinist although I love machining and I love making engines um, I have over here that's my South Bend lathe um, it's about a 1930, near as I can figure. Uh, after 1930, they put the engine, uh, the electric motor down below. Uh, this was still designed to run on steam, and they retrofitted an electric motor to the side of it, around back. Anyways, that's another discussion. Back to the solenoid engine, I wanted to explain some things about this. Um, so... I started with, I had this 120 volt solenoid. I don't know where I acquired it, but uh, I had it in a box for a long time and I always knew I wanted to do something cool with it. And I had a, uh, I was trying to make a PM Research steam engine. It was the number one model. It's about 129 bucks. It's a little cast iron thing and it came with uh, some, this, uh, cross slide and crank and it's a little machining kit well I was trying to build the steam engine and through breaking taps and breaking drills and these some bitches were so tiny um, like a number three freaking tap anyways it got destroyed and so I took the parts from that engine the cross slide the uh, the connecting rod, the crankshaft, and let's see, I think uh, that's it. Um, and I took those parts and I finagled them together to put together this solenoid engine. And uh, I fabric cobbled these bearings out of brass. Uh, the flywheel is stainless. This one is just good old steel. And. I originally had this engine put together with a, uh, I had a, a, a copper tab and it would hit the cam and that was the switch that would make it turn on and off. Well, the engine ran so quiet. <laughs> it was ridiculously quiet. I didn't want that. I wanted a little bit of noise. So I came up with this push rod system. I love seeing push rods on engines. So... I put, this is a roller bearing that is on this eccentric, and the roller bearing is working the push rod. I have these brass bearings here and here. I have a, a hole drilled in right here where I can dribble some oil in there. My push rod, I threaded it. It's a quarter inch push rod. It's a chunk of stock I had. And I threaded it and put a locking nut on there for a stop, a positive stop. Speaking of stop, oh, my engine just stopped. Anywho, it does that sometimes. Sometimes the push rod sticks. The engine is still tight, and I'm trying to break it in, and sometimes the push rod sticks. And she won't run when it does that. Uh, so I have a rocker here that I made out of brass. I strapped the solenoid with some copper straps I had. And uh, this was really just uh, a quick finagle put together thing. I didn't know really how to do it. So I strapped it all on this piece of 4 inch I-beam. I welded a lamp to it. I really wanted a lamp. One of these vintage style lamps. This is an incandescent Edison bulb. 
a little vintage style socket on a vintage style rope. Uh, I don't have it on right now because the glare is too much for the camera and it's ridiculous. So I have a copper tab over here. The AC comes in from this, I have a control unit. This is for controlling a router. And I got this at Lowe's. I don't remember how much it was, but it's just a variable resistor. It has a switch so I can go to full power or variable power. You plug it in, comes over here. Uh, this beer can is here just for a, a reference and size to the engine. Um, I'm actually drinking coffee right now. So anywho, uh, the AC gets rectified in this rectal fryer and it comes through the spaghetti mess of wires and I have the positive now this is 120 volt DC so positive goes to that copper tab and then I have negative going to the engine so the engine is the ground or negative and uh, the push rod, the rocker it makes the connection to this tab. This tab is not touching anything else. It's hot glued to the side of the solenoid so it's insulated from everything. And then when the rocker hits it, it makes the connection and makes the solenoid fire. So I really like the way this thing sounds. Uh, if I turn it up, now on camera on this microphone it sounds really loud, but it's actually pretty quiet, especially when I turn it down. I mean that sounds like a clock right there. It's pretty quiet. And my shop has a nice echo to it too. So uh, you're, what you're hearing might sound really loud, but it actually, to me, it sounds awesome. I let this thing run in my room all night when I sleep, and it puts me to sleep, and I love listening to it. And I like waking up to it, and I have my coffee, and I just watch this thing run. It's really why I like these solenoid engines, because there's no fuel, there's no mess, there's no heat. Uh, you don't have to boil water. It's just, you turn it on and you go so thank you for watching my video um, there's been a lot of people on YouTube who have inspired me to do things like this and I hope that I might inspire somebody to build something so uh, with that happy new year thanks for watching